Hello, everyone, and welcome back to AI for Us 50 Plus. I'm Tom Hathaway, and today we're diving straight into something that might make you feel like a kid again. Creating illustrated storybooks, now with AI. Now, before you click away thinking this is just for grandparents with toddlers, hang on a sec. These books aren't just for little ones anymore. I have to reveal something that might surprise you. My wife, Angela, is an avid reader, and she loves picture books. So here's the thing. Like about 1% to 4% of the population, Angela has aphantasia, which is a fancy way of saying her mind's eye is basically broken. When she reads, the red barn sat nestled in the rolling green hills, her brain just shrugs and says, sure, Angela, whatever you say. She needs pictures to actually see the story. And AI has made creating these visual stories incredibly easy. Plus, we've discovered that illustrated stories are more just fun. Who knew? Today, I'll show you several different approaches from the I want it now and I want it simple method <laughs> all the way to I want complete creative control and I don't mind spending some time on it. So grab your favorite beverage and let's create some magic together. First, let's talk about why you might want to create a picture book. You can create personalized bedtime stories for your grandchildren. You can create birthday gifts that actually mean something. Or you can be teaching materials for hobbies that you're passionate about. Or maybe even memory books about your family visits. You can thrill your grandchildren by letting them read your life stories. The possibilities are limited only by your imagination. And AI is about to supercharge that imagination. Now, I tested all of this in the free versions of these tools, so you don't need to spend a penny to follow along. Although, fair warning, once you see how easy this is, you might find yourself creating storybooks for every occasion. I'm going to demonstrate three different approaches for getting the job done. So, let's start off with one of the fastest methods, which is Google's Gemini storybook feature. This is perfect for those moments when you need something now because you neglected to get it earlier. For starters, access Gemini storybooks by going to gemini.google.com. Sign in with your Google account and click on Explore Gems in the left sidebar. Select a Storybook. You can think of gems like specialized assistants that already know what you're trying to do. Now next, craft your prompt. And here's the prompt I used in a recent session. Using a whimsical watercolor art style, create a storybook for my niece Lily, who just got her first puppy named Clover, but keeps forgetting the puppy's routines and has to learn how to be responsible while still having fun. Now notice what I included. An art style a target audience, the main characters, the central conflict, and a theme. Then watch the magic happen. Hit enter and wait about three minutes, and here is the book. This shows you exactly how my prompt elements translated into Gemini's story. Pages 1 to 2, the title, Lily and Clover's Big Adventure, uses my characters' names, and the watercolor style is exactly what I requested. That magical first meeting moment came from Just Got Her First Puppy. Pages 3 to 4. My Keeps Forgetting Routines prompt created Clover's confused expression and a parent stepping in. AI interpreted responsible as needing structure, not just willpower. Pages 5 to 6. The Happy Day Chart Solution came from my theme of responsibility while still having fun. Now, AI took these abstract concepts and created a concrete, kid-friendly tool. In pages 7 through 10, well, AI created realistic setbacks and eventual success because good stories need progression. The ending shows them playing together, proving responsibility enables joy rather than eliminating. Now that you've got your masterpiece created, let's talk about sharing it. Because what's the point of creating something this delightful if you can't show it off, right? First things first. Look for that share button. It's usually pretty obvious, 
Google doesn't hide these things from us. Give it a click, and voila. The system creates a shareable link for you. This is your golden ticket to spreading joy, so copy that link. Now here's where it gets fun. See those little social media icons? Click directly on Facebook, X, or whatever platform you prefer, and your digital story pops right up in your feed, ready to impress your friends. Or maybe you're more the personal touch type. Open a new browser window, paste that link into the address bar, or drop it into an email. Really, nothing says I was thinking of you like a custom storybook landing in someone's inbox. Your grandkids are going to think you're basically a wizard. Now, here's something really neat that I discovered. Besides reading the book, you can actually listen to it. Pretty impressive, right? Lily and Clover's Happy Day Lily had wished for a puppy on every dandelion puff and birthday candle. One sunny morning, a little fluff ball with a tail that wiggled like a happy worm. And if that voice doesn't quite suit your story's mood, you can choose a lower pitch option. Sometimes the deeper voice works better for certain stories. Lily had wished for a puppy on every dandelion puff and birthday candle. One sunny morning, a little fluff ball with a tail that wiggled. Maybe your tale about Grandpa's fishing adventures needs that more authoritative tone. Now one last feature. There's a print-to-PDF function, which sounds great in theory, but that can be temperamental. Sometimes it works perfectly, sometimes it doesn't. Don't count on it for last-minute printing. But when it cooperates, it's handy. Now, the beauty of this sharing system is that once someone has the link, they can enjoy your creation anytime, anywhere. No special apps, no complicated downloads. Just click and enjoy. Now, for more control and better quality, let's combine ChatGPT's storytelling prowess with Gemini's instructions. My friend Frankie had this idea about introducing Greek mythology to preschoolers. She'd already started the story and just wanted help finishing it. I demonstrated how she could combine the best of ChatGPT and Gemini with this structured prompt. You are an expert in Greek mythology and writing children's picture books for preschoolers. I want to write a 10-page story about Pandora's box. I already have the start of a story idea that I want you to use. Pandora, who'd been made by Greek gods, had a young cousin. Her name should start with a P. Her favorite word was why. Her curiosity often ended in trouble for her. She had many times been told that curiosity killed the cat. She thought that was silly because she couldn't understand how a cat could have anything to do with her curiosity until a few days before her fifth birthday. Now, she knew that her parents had already bought her present and hidden it somewhere in the house, because they did that every year. This year, she was sure she was going to be able to find their secret hiding spot. I need you to finish the story with a lesson for the child. Give me a few ideas for the ending. That's the prompt. And, as you can see here, ChatGBT gave me several ending options for the storyline. One, the miniature box surprise. Number two, the box that let the mischief out. Number three, the box that shared hope. And number four, the box full of surprises. Now, Frankie chose the one where curiosity leads to minor mischief, since that's kind of the central theme of the Pandora story, right? Using Canvas, we refined specific sections until the story felt just right. That's my favorite part, fine-tuning until it feels just right. For example, I wanted to capture that classic curiosity-killed-the-cat lesson, but in a warm, gentle way. So I asked ChatGPT to reframe it. After a few iterations, we landed on opening things too early can turn wow into oops. Perfect. I also refined the ending to highlight that patience makes joy grow bigger not just extra fun. This kind of back and forth is exactly how you shape AI's output to align with your vision. Now, to ask Gemini for a book, you need to tell it what art style it should use. Since <laughs> I know diddly about art styles, I asked my trusty AI tool to help me. I prompted ChatGBT to create a prompt that I can use for Gemini Gems Storybook, and I gave it an example. 
using anime art style, create a storybook. Add some elements from Greek mythology like settings, furniture, and clothing being from that era. It came back with, using a whimsical storybook style, create a preschool-friendly illustrated story set in ancient Greece. Characters should have soft, rounded shapes, expressive big eyes, and wear simplified Greek clothing like chitons and tunics with playful laurel wreaths or tiny winged sandals. Use pastel and warm earthy colors, sandy yellows, soft blues, and terracotta reds with gentle watercolor or crayon-like textures. Include simplified Greek architecture, columns, amphorae, tiled floors in the furniture and the backgrounds, and charming settings such as sunlit courtyards, Mount Olympus silhouettes, and cozy homes with misinspired decor. Keep the tone light, magical, and safe for young children. Sounds like more Greek to me. I couldn't have written that in a thousand years. But in my youthful innocence, I just copied the prompt, along with the text of the story that uh, Frankie and I had co-authored earlier, and proceeded to open Gemini. Well, here in the left panel, you should see a list of your prior prompts, assuming you've been using Gemini. And above those, you should see the storybook feature and explore gems. Now, JFI, a gem in Gemini is very much like a custom GPT in ChatGPT. If you're familiar with that, same kind of a thing. These are basically pre-designed prompts and interactions that you have available. However, we're only interested in the storybook gem at this time. Now, once we start the storybook gem, we can simply paste the prompt and storybook text we copied earlier into their prompt and watch in awe as it does its magic. We have to be in awe here because there's really nothing else to see until it's done. <laughs> so pages one through three. The working title, Pandora and Piper, the birthday surprise. Eh, doesn't really give anything away. But that's just a suggestion at this time. Our detailed art prompt delivered sandy yellows, Greek columns, and expressive big eyes exactly as specified. Now pages four through six. The birthday present setup came from our ChatGPT story development. And pages 7 through 9, the colorful wisps representing minor mischief shows how our collaborative approach created age-appropriate consequences, teaching without traumatizing because we specifically chose the patience ending. And page 10, the warm family resolution reflects our refined story choice, wisdom over punishment, patience over prohibition. Every element traces back to specific prompt decisions we made. Now, for another amazing feature that blew my mind, Angela's mom wanted to be able to read the book, too, so I just told Gemini to translate the book into German, and voila, near perfection. It did change the images somewhat, but the text was a very good translation of the English original, and the images still fit perfectly. So think about this for a moment. We've gone from creating a personalized storybook in minutes to having it professionally translated into another language in seconds. For those of us with multilingual families, or if you're trying to help grandchildren learn a second language, this is pure gold. Angela and I spent 20 years in Germany, and I can tell you that finding quality children's books in multiple languages used to be expensive and time-consuming. Now it's literally one sentence of instruction to the AI. Das Flattern, Klongen und Bellen machte so einen Lärm, dass Pandora und Pipers Eltern hereingeeilt kamen. Sie lachten und halfen ihr, die Schmetterlinge zu fangen. That kind of creative thinking is exactly why this technology opens up so many possibilities for different people with different needs. Whether you're looking to create something special for family, educational purposes, or just pure fun, AI adapts to what you need. Here are some real-world applications. For grandparents, Bedtime stories featuring your grandchildren as heroes. For teachers, educational content with personalized characters. For gift givers, birthday party, favor books featuring all of the guests. For memory makers, turn family visits into story adventures. And for hobbyists, create instructional stories about your passions. Some of the things I've learned, be specific in your prompt because AI loves details. And don't be afraid to iterate and refine your results. And remember that 
good enough is often perfect for your purpose. In addition, by the way, save your successful prompts for future use. You'll thank me later. The publishing landscape for AI-generated content is changing rapidly, so I won't give specific advice about selling these books. But for personal use, for gifts, and sharing with your family, this technology is absolutely magical. I hope this inspires you to create something wonderful. Remember, at our age, we've earned the right to play with the coolest tools. And in my opinion, AI is definitely the coolest tool I've encountered in decades. And that's all for today's episode of AI for Us 50 Plus. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let us know in the comments what kind of storybook you're planning to create. Angela and I love hearing about your AI adventures. And who knows? Your idea might become our next video topic. So until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, keep experimenting, and most importantly, keep having fun with AI.